So now it is morning. Margarash is just on her way back, presumably, and I will leave it to you guys to decide what to do next. I return to the camp with a rabbit holding it by its ears. It's a good thing, too. On your way back, victorious from your hunt, a slight tremor occurred, shaking the ground, and an earthquake in County Avon is very rare. David is kind of like, kind of like rubbing his eyes, just waking up, and maybe he thought he was hungover or something. He's like, uh, what's going on? Uh, as it happens, I decide to brace myself against the tree. The tremor only lasts a few moments. Uh, it was very light. No one was knocked over. Birds flee, but that's perhaps it. Uh, not one particular owl, of course. Zaid and I imagine David are probably gesticulating and murmuring amongst themselves about Rune. So David kind of gets up and, you know, starts to get ready, um, mumbling to himself like, Oh, that was a bit strange. Well, I suppose I'll get things ready. And he starts to lock up his book and get all the stolen items that uh, weren't already claimed into a rucksack. I just make my way and sit down in front of the fire pit, uh, planning to repurpose it as I take my remaining hand axe and start to butcher the rabbit I hunted a bit sloppily just to get a meal in me. And I slowly look over toward David as I'm skinning this rabbit. He finds himself staring back at you, especially the rabbit. And he asks, so um, what's on the agenda today? Well, we have an appointment to keep with Noros and Cinder between a few of us. I imagine we should make our way towards the tower post haste. I actually turn and look at Zaid and David rather than like sidelong glancing them and say in a fairly like calm and even tone of, I know that rune probably gives you all the strength that you need to subsist on the long march back. But I know myself, I need to at least have something to tide me over. And then I look to him and David and say, I have a couple of days rations with me. If uh, you'd care to go ahead and break your fast with us before we leave. I interject and speak up towards Nolame. You can have some of this. And I loft the rabbit in the air once more. Or what's remaining of it. You've definitely earned it. I may have earned it with the fight last night, but you've earned far more considering that you shed blood in a mess that I dragged us all into. But with that said, I happily accept your offer of a warm breakfast. Thank you very much. And then I look at Zaid and Wolfrun, and I say, I know it is poor manners to give a gift of a gift, but I would still offer you my dry rations, cold though they are. I appreciate it, but I believe I brought my own rations. And Zaid also reaches into a little sack of his own and pulls out some various dried meats and such and nods to it, kind of suggesting, like, thanks, but I'm good. As David steps forward to greedily uh, accept the rabbit, though not offered to him, uh, an owl swoops down, and this makes David kind of flinch back and hide. He's like, oh my god, an eagle! Uh, or some sort of falcon! Would I recognize the bird and if i do what i recognize that it's extremely odd that an owl is coming out like this you don't recognize the bird though it is odd and it seems to be carrying some sort of letter in its beak or talons and it perches nearby kind of looking at you all expectantly can i motion to it using animal handling to you try can. to get it to come to me the owl uh, looks at you as if you're his long lost friend and perches <laughs> on the fence near you I gently take the note from its beak. The note is written in fine calligraphy. It's from your friend Coulter, who says, My friends, I hope this letter finds you well. Please take care of this owl while it delivers this letter to you, and see him back safely to me. I would like to know your whereabouts, as I have recently come into contact with my own superiors in the Academy of Natural Philosophy. I have been given leave to join you in your endeavors, though... I should point out, while I am funded by the Academy, I will not be in contracted to the foreigner, uh, Zaid. I wish to know where to meet you all, in town or abroad. Simply write on this parchment your location and the intended meeting time, and I will meet you there. 
your friend, Kelter of Avendrad. Do you just want to have him meet us at the uh, tower? Just a suggestion. Do you share this letter with the party or just write something back and send it on his way? I share it with the party because I want to know, I want to get a consensus on where we should meet him. All right. So, I was about to say, I thought that you said that you didn't have access to messenger birds. I don't. The owl yeah. sort of flutters. <laughs> he has like this blue sheen on his feathers and he's very fey appearing sort of owl. And he's very uh, calm and nonplussed by even being this close to you guys and everything. It's just... As I understand it, the Academy has a number of different scholars and a number of them also deal with messenger birds. But unless you have the particular favor of a higher ranking member of the Academy itself, we're not likely to have access to them, unfortunately. So then I go ahead and uh, look at the party and say, well, we have a number of information sources and we have to go ahead and follow up on the information that Wolfron and I found out from the stonemason sooner rather than later. Because as I recall, it was go do this, but do it soon. These, this sort of like open invitation to these sort of meetings isn't going to stand forever. So the real question is, is it more important to go ahead and divide up immediately and take care of our several tasks that we need to take care of before even fall? Or should we all gather together with Calther first? Let's meet up with Calther first and then decide from there. He then, could have information that would make our other individual tasks more easily approached. Precisely. It might give us more of a sense of priority. Hmm. I wonder if it would be better to meet him in town, where at least we wouldn't stick out as much, although there could be more people to overhear us. Or we could have him journey outside of the town and meet with us on our return venture. And then that way we wouldn't have people listening around every alleyway. Why not at Cinder's Tower? Mm, we could meet at Cinder's Tower, but I couldn't guarantee that we would have an entrance uh, or that we would be given an audience with Cinder if I were to bring my new assembly of friends with me. Well, I and Morgrosh will be meeting with Noros inside at his invitation. At the very least, we could meet outside with Calter. Ah, I didn't realize that you also had business at Cinder's Tower. Well then, I can't imagine that he would disagree with that. Although you can see that I'm not necessarily happy that other people are going to be there whenever I'm meeting with him. So it sounds like then we're agreed we would meet him at Cinder's Tower, and then from there we could jointly think of our next decisions. Sounds appropriate. Killing two monkeys with one tree, as they say. By now, I'm just finished rigging up the rabbit on a makeshift spit and uh, preparing it to what one would expect of orcish cuisine. Charred on the outside, raw in the middle. Ew. <laughs> I take a bite, staring David dead in the eyes. Suddenly he doesn't look so hungry anymore. And kind of just it keeps his eyes nailed to packing and then repacking stuff when he doesn't have anything to do. And then he kind of looks over to the south and is like, hmm? Oh. And do you um, write in the letter and send it back or what? Yeah, I just, uh, if we're going to meet at Cinder's Tower, is that what we agree on, is we're going to meet at Cinder's Tower? Uh, yes. Okay, okay well, then, yeah, I write that on the note and pin it and give it back to the owl and make a motion for him to take it back. I toss a little bit of my cooked rabbit to the owl, because it is a good owl. It flaps its wings and just kind of cocks its head and seems uninterested in the food mm, and just sort of food. reaches out a talon and flexes it at the uh, piece of paper and hoots in a friendly manner. Is there anything else the party wants to do? As we are eating our rabbit, first I look at everyone and say, so, I don't know how you all wanted to handle the spoils of last night. I am happy because I was the one who brought us into this to take a lesser share, however we would choose to go ahead and divide things. But as far as the gold pieces, I believe I would probably be the one to be most well received by any merchants we might go to in the future. We've already seen how bigoted a large number of the folks in this area have already been towards a half orc, and I imagine towards a Sacrii. And while I imagine a half elf isn't the most welcome of characters, I still believe that 
I would be able to go ahead and get us better prices. Unless Wolfrun, you know people in this area, and you think that you would be able to go ahead and be our designated negotiator. I'll be frank with you. I don't particularly like money or like dealing with money. Well, then, if there are no objections, I will, of course, keep a very detailed account. If that is something that you would all be interested in, then the second thing that I'd be doing is I'm continuing to like munch on the last little bit of the rabbit because I'm eating extremely slowly is while we think about that, though, on our way to Cinder's Tower, something else we should be considering just a minor thing, but last time I was there, there were a number of nobles both around and in the tower. Now, the nobles in the tower, I wasn't able to learn too much about them, but the ones outside of the tower, because they thought that High Runarchic is only something that local people of Runia would know, were talking about how these rumblings about the open worship of the old gods among these lower citizens isn't confined to just members of the church or the the count of Avendrad, but also a large number of the minor nobility as well, to the point to where they see the presence of old god worshippers and the current leadership as being directly linked. So whenever we approach Cinder's Tower, we may hear of other things that may be useful to us. I know we, you all have your own business in the area, but I figured I would I figured I would let you know since we're going to that place here soon. And then I quietly go back to munching the last little bit of my rabbit. At least so far as goes towards the spoils. I'm not interested in any compensation for myself, but I do believe that a fifth should go towards David for his accounting of the corpses as he will need to make record of them anyway with the town census. David looks uncomfortable and declines. I'm I'm not supposed to touch money. Oh, well then I suppose uh, the folk in the West serve these matters differently. Very well then. Nolame has a surprised look on his face and says, I never intended for an even split. So if it is to be divided between the three of us, I will take half of mine and donate it to the temple whenever we return if neither of you will take it. That way I can still go ahead and serve a purpose that I know you would both support. Well, that is most charitable of you. Well, again, if, if you hadn't all been involved with me, then you wouldn't have to be here. It's not fair for me to take a full share. My reward is actually having people who walked out here with me. David smiles warmly at uh, Nolame's words. Nolame is welcome to have my share. Because of him, I had the opportunity to slay old enemies. I don't need much else. This makes David look at Margarash in a kind of sidelong, curious sort of way. Like perhaps he misjudged the half-orc. Nolame is, like, keeps looking like he's trying to say something and then just kind of pauses and then finally manages to get out. I will take these funds and use them in trust for the good of the party. I don't consider this something that I'm carrying around on my own behalf, just so you all know. So please, at least let me know if there's something that you realize you need, and we will take care of it. I find that acceptable. I, I set down the husk of a rabbit, and I stand up and step closer to Nolame, and I reach out with a closed fist, and I give him a sort of... A friendly nudge to his shoulder, just sort of grinding my knuckles against him. You've already stood up for me twice since my arrival. This should be a lesson to stand up for yourself as well. I don't need the money. Spend it however you wish. David very quietly writes something down in his book. Maybe I'll start by standing up for myself right now. I'm letting you know that whenever we get back, you don't know when and you don't know what, but I'll be surprising you with something. Uh, that I get through our collective reward. I just kind of smile and try and disengage by looking back to the fire. Uh, does anyone have anything, like, I know that we kind of got wrapped up in the money talk there, but does anyone have anything of, like, significant thought regarding the point I brought up about the minor nobility as well? 
I don't know if that actually matters to you all, but I found it interesting because I really thought this was a case of the peasantry was worshiping gods that weren't easily controlled by the rule by the high ruling class. I didn't realize this went so deep that now the ruling class is using it as a sort of political cudgel against one another. Zaid like definitely wants to get out into that like forest meeting at some point to kind of see if he can like cut the head off the snake and like have that be the message sent back to like everyone else because if it's so infested he i don't think he thinks that it can be dealt with on like an an individual by individual basis so uh go to cinders yes yeah all right here Okay, so you all arrive almost midday back in town. Um, you can see Calter's waiting for you outside. Uh, his owl is, is kind of like resting atop at the well, kind of like perched atop of it. Wolfrun is kind of hanging back a significant space while you guys approached. But other than that, everything seems fine. It's not too many crowds here or anything. Everything seems quiet. Seeing Wolfrun hang back now makes me wonder why is Wolfrun hanging back? I'm like, should I be obsessing over this or should I just go into the tower? Well, after plotting Coulter, I'll uh, kind of raise and wave my uh, banner about and hail him down. Smile broadly and nod my head towards them in greeting. I go ahead and look at Zaid and Margarosh and say, since I've already met Cinder, I'll go ahead and see if he's available and able to receive us all. Would you be interested in just letting Calter know about the interesting night that we've had? I'd be more than happy to. You look not too worse for the wear. Welcome back to more civilized lands. Well, I didn't get involved too much with the fighting myself, and, well, Morgarash is already red, so... The stains don't really do much to uh, affect. Thank you for accepting the agreement uh, for me to uh, possibly join your band for a while and uh, assist you in my role from the Academy. Well, having a specialist of your sort of the arcane qualities of the world, always a boon on a treacherous journey such as this. Well, it is a lovely day outside, but uh, I believe we were all going to have respite inside. So then I knock on the door and I'm waiting expectantly for the door once again to open magically. Before it, your fist hits the wood, the doors swing open and kind of makes your wrist bend at an odd angle. My face shifts between annoyed and amused at how that played out. As I walk in, I just say to Cinder that, Cinder, there are a number of people outside that I've been journeying with that also have business to see you. I just wanted to see if you were in a position to receive a number of guests this early afternoon. He turns around from tending to his, like, kettle of tea or something that's boiling over the fire. It's like, oh, hello. Yes, bring them in. And then, as I'm turning away, I say, once you've attended to us as a group, perhaps you'll have time to talk with me afterwards. All the time in the world. Excellent. Thank you, my friend. I imagine I would have come out, like, not too long after their conversation ended and said, Cinder is ready to receive all of us. Please just follow me. I peer over my shoulder and look back towards Wolf Run and speak up to the party. What about him? I had assumed that he would just be coming with us. As far as I'm concerned, he's involved. He should know what's going on. He might be able to help us with anything we learn. And then I just walk to him like, Wolf Run, you're with the party. You should come join us. I was waiting for someone but i don't think they're coming well um do you think you'll be able to meet up with them later then i don't think it's my choice that is the way of life a lot of the times isn't it so the moment the entirety of the party enters the tower the doors magically close behind you welcome he says magnanimously i am cinder he kind of nods to Calter, and those oh, he recognizes God. from town, his eyes squint at Wolfrun and kind of gives him a, a sort of half nod, like, oh, I'm, I might remember you, I've seen you around. Wolfrun kind of half nods back. I believe I've seen a few of you around town before, but... And his eyes drift towards the non-humans. It seems introductions are in order. I am Cinder of Gask, 
It is my pleasure to make your acquaintance. I was an assistant to the court mage years ago, but now I make my living selling books and oddities. I must pardon the intrusion for those of us whom you are not so well acquainted as others. Uh, I was led to believe that Noro Sarkenfinder would be here. He purses his lips and says, oh yes, he was indeed here. I believe his companion ushered him to leave unexpectedly, though. Did you have business with him? I could perhaps send him a message for you. Uh, it's unfortunate that we missed him. Yes, indeed, we... Let us say that there is a substance that is being bandied about allegedly into the mouths of certain members of the nobility, and we have come across such a vial, and threats to the nobility were to be discussed. He tenses suddenly and says, is the vial blue at all? Uh, so Zaid would look over to Margarosh. I believe it was green, but uh, Margarosh, would you do the honors of presenting it? I look at the others with a bit of reluctance and dig into my satchel and produce the green liquid in question. You take out a large helping of a strange, viscous green fluid. The cinder steps forward and peers at you instead of the liquid, getting a better look at your physiology. Or... As he's doing that, I walk up to him and say, Cinder, I'm sorry. We still, I still haven't given you introductions to my companions here. These are the people who were willing to go with me to that unfortunate matter I had to attend to yesterday. And Margarosh here is my good friend who slew several of those would-be honorable duelists who would have killed me after I slew their friend. And Zaid here is a holy warrior on a task to rid the local area of a lot of a large number of its problems i would be very appreciative if you could help them as though they were your own friends as well oh of course i did hear about the duel mishap murder is a very serious crime i would expect you all had just cause we were attacked first well one was an honorable duel where he struck at me first and then the others were coming up slowly, plotting to go ahead and slay me should I approach on the other side of the river, or should their champion fall in a duel with me. Because if they had been there to escort him, then there was no reason they shouldn't have come across to support him in the duel, like Zaid did here with me, standing by to make sure the rules of the duel were honored. So I don't know how much more justification you can have than that. Wolfron scowling seems agitated. His eyes kind of darting a little bit nervously and then says, uh, Can I interest any of you in um, any uh, magical reagents, components, books, oddities you might not find at the temple? My eyebrows perk up as I rub my chin, thinking about what's on my list. I look around. Hmm. I start trying to make eye contact with uh, Nola May. I make eye contact with Wolfrun and realize that I haven't introduced him, and at the same time, that Cinder hasn't been making eye contact with him. So then I make, I make my way over to Wolfrun. Okay. In a very low voice, uh, Wolfrun says, how would he know about the duel? I mean, I told him that I was going to a duel, and I assume that he just thought that, well, of course, if I'm still here, then that means the other one died. I came here actually to him for some aid. I got, and then I show him this ring. I was like, he tried to aid me by giving me a magical artifact. So I know that he's someone who is willing to go ahead and put some of his own capital on the line to aid me. And then I look at him. You're staying here at the back of the party. Is there something about Cinder that you don't want to go ahead and approach him? Or is it just that you didn't have a reason to meet with him? Because if not, I apologize for not introducing Quiet. you, my friend. Be quietly, we are being followed. How did Cinder know that you had won the duel before we got here? How did he hear of the outcome before? we got here uh chill goes down nolame's spine as he realizes that wolf runs right that Calter had been able to go ahead and find us with his familiar and so there's no reason to expect that other people couldn't have been following us i We've look been to him being and... followed since we left the woods not all of the spiders were killed he is a man with a large number of connections in the local area 
I wouldn't be surprised if a number of people would be following us and wanting to know the outcome of the duel, especially considering the composition of our party. I have trouble understanding why he would be plotting to do us harm whenever he could have just as easily given me no support. Regardless, we are being followed, and it's definitely by hostile entities. So the question is, do we bring this to the attention of someone who has shown an investment in at least keeping one member of this party alive, and so long as I'm with the party, he should be supporting us? Trinket alone is enough to gain your trust? It is not. There are other things that I cannot openly discuss that cause me to trust Cinder. There are things that I've already staked my life on, though. I see. I have to, I personally have to trust Cinder. The rest of you may not have to, but I am in a position to where it is not an option for me. But while I'm with you, I won't openly talk to him of things that could put you all in danger. I don't think so long as you're with me that he will be a problem for us directly. We should be able to count on this man as an ally. I wouldn't bet on it, but I hope you're right. I can be blinded to the needs that I have, and Cinder is an essential part of me meeting those needs, as I say, turning back towards him. I hope that you'll continue to go ahead and keep a suspicious eye so that you can see what I may be blind to. I will make sure that my tongue is not so loose that I may incidentally put any of you in danger. The forests and are always watching. Fortunately for now, we're in a tower. It's a little bit easier to know whenever you're being observed. I just wanted to say that I do have my, my bird out there keeping watch while we were in here, and uh, we were letting that discussion go, and meanwhile, yeah, I was just making pleasantries with Cinder and asking him if, he, if he's happened upon any interesting tomes of lore recently or any other oddities, and, you know, he said he has a shop, so here with those type of things, so I asked him about those. Your watchbird, telepathically, because he's your familiar, lets you know that there's someone snooping around outside, but this, this is just like in your mind. So while you're talking, he's like, oh, what are you interested in? That's Cinder. I sort of rubbing my beard and my eyes sort of like look up. I'm like, let me get back to you on that in a moment. I have a few tomes that uh, are translated that aren't really accepted in the temple. Uh, the Five Chambers of the Soul, um... I believe I have something by a one explorer of Black Cell, something to the effect of the Fox Spring region. I put my full concentration to my familiar to see who's out there. So I basically lose track of whatever Cinder is talking about and kind of go into a little minor trance. So when he brings up the Five Gates of the Soul, is that it? What was the name of the title? Yes. I think that was it. Okay. I, I misspoke. When he brings that up, Zaid's going to perk up quite a bit. The owl reports back to Coulter that uh, it was just some large human in purple robes, but they're like around the other side of the tower now. Uh, some people say it's, um, this is ridiculous, but a, a culture from Gorusad's past. Uh, there's very few people here who believe that there's some sort of prehistory, and I, I suppose the people perpetuating this myth have a little book of philosophy that is not in keeping with the Temple of Rune. It's uh, mostly just how to live your life in disciplined ways. He starts flipping through the book. Um, it's about self-sacrifice, uh, mostly about eating and sleeping, um, grooming. What were these people like? He looks up towards the half-orc Magarash and says, oh, then closes the book. I don't actually believe that there is any former people who lived in the Gorosad Peninsula. It's a wild land. Uh, however, uh, the way they write this stuff, um, it, it's a fiction, I believe, that purports that there was some sort of higher civilization and they had the secrets to living a good life. There's a lot of references to reptiles, though, for some reason. Snake men? Snake men? No, just like lizards and snakes. It's strange. They say that... Uh, and then he goes to, like, the index of the book, to where, like, an introduction might be. And he reads that... Serpents have a way of maintaining their mind in the present and always forgive others. Eh, whatever. It is an interesting read. And, um... uh, I'm wondering if he can do a history check to see if there's any similarities to the doctrines in this book and the like cultural practices or history of the snake men that he's aware of. Um, so, Margarash, Cinder looks genuine and 
Zaid, no evidence of snakemen history or culture has ever been found. Well, I mean, like, outside of, like, ruins and stuff? Yes, and the sister order to your own that's in charge of guarding those ruins actively destroys evidence of snakeman gotcha. culture. Yeah. And Cinder does seem, like, semi-interested in it, but you can tell he's more interested in actually selling you the book. How old is this book? He looks down at the paper and s considers your words. Uh, well, I got it uh, a few years ago uh, in the market. Uh, what do you ask? And he kind of offers it to you to look at. I'll peruse it, examine it uh, gingerly. The cover is a very fine leather, and it, it has a finish to preserve the leather, covered in like fish scales or snake scales. It's clearly not done by any masters of your school. It is written in your language, so you could deduce that this isn't ancient texts. It's either a translation or it's unique to your era. The cinder's also like, I do have um, potions as well. Uh, are you interested in magical items? I, I do have a ring I've never managed to identify. And, oh, by the way, I do identify items and, and scrolls. At a reasonable price, of course. Earlier, when we came in here, you were condemning us for our alleged crimes. You accused us of murder, but you're willing to help us. He splays his palms out wide and says... All I said was, murder is a serious crime. I condemn no man. I look at him closely and keep the remaining thoughts to myself. I'm willing to help you, to be honest. Because of your connections in town, and my friendship with Nolame, and I do have a few friends in the academy, of course. I am curious about the Zachary as well, although that isn't the source of my interest in all of you. However, I've never seen a red orc, or a half-orc. Never even spoken to one before. Not since the war. I visibly cringe at being called a half-orc openly. Is that not what you are? I look around the room, uh, just shrinking in my posture and doing anything I can not to look directly at him before rubbing my jaw and confirming with a, a simple yes. How is it you were born red? Why was he born looking like a bird? And I point towards Zaid. I interject and remind Cinder that while scholarly interests are not problematic, we have to go ahead and remember that there's a time and a place for asking and understanding and learning new things, and perhaps this is not the correct moment for him to be asking these sorts of questions. At Nolome, he vehemently asserts with a kind of knife hand gesture, this is directly important to matters that I have serious business with, and he says it to you in such a way that it could be connected to an earlier conversation. He uh, relaxes and says, Look, I am sorry. I made you, well, I perhaps spoke too harshly. You are all friends here. I am a foreigner and half-breed myself. Uh, my parents came from Kabir, which is now known as Arcturia. I am looked at strangely myself. Although people have grown to love me in this town, I am what you would call a thane now as well. And I look towards... <sighs> he chooses his next words carefully. Those born of uncertain fates, with a certain kinship. And you can tell that there's like baked in meaning behind every word. And then he changes the subject. Anyway, is there anything I can help you guys with? rubbing my beard intently thinking about his every words and, and looking at this book very curious about the book actually that will be one gold i believe the investment might be worth it i slip out a gold piece before you can i go ahead and press six in the cinder's hand and say we've gone ahead and decided to go ahead and work jointly on this venture and also i promise to go ahead and repay the initial loan that you gave me in order to go ahead and help make sure the company could secure necessary gear if needed. So, this is for him, and then here are your five gold back. He pushes the gold back into your hand, and kind of narrows his eyes at you. All of them? And then he turns his head very minutely towards the direction of Zaid for just a moment. All of them. No one needs to walk into a potential trap for another man, and yet Zaid did for me because it was according to his principles and set of honor. I might not necessarily agree with him all the time, but 
yes, I would speak for him and stand for him in regards to this matter. Sounds Can I help indeed. any of you else with anything? Well, uh, unless you have pertinent information shared to you by Noros regarding the attempt on the nobles' lives, I'm not so sure. Right, this attempt on the nobles' lives. I'd like to discuss this. Can I get you some drinks? So, about this attempt on the nobles' lives, I'm not sure what to do with that. I could tell Kelthus, who, as you know, is my good friend. Uh, you perhaps might not know that. When we were in our youths, Kelthus, who is now the captain of the uh, guard here, was, well, let's say, my adventuring companion. Yes, so they wanted to poison them with this green liquid. So, are you formally presenting Cinder with an accusation against Siegfried? Well, I, I will link him to the production of the the vial of poison and the suggestion, yes. Cinder asks the party, do you want to leave the potion here for analysis? No. Well, we've had it analyzed by Noros. I see. Do you have any idea why Noros wanted to go to Gorosad? He wouldn't tell me. I frankly am shocked that he's not here. Why? Are you some sort of friend of his? Well, we were speaking on this subject and it seemed that he was taking a appropriately grave interest in the matter and wanted to speak on it further one-to-one. -one. We mentioned that we were going out to see to the matter of the duel and then that we would be back in the morning. And well, mm. with him not here, it's it's just a bit of a surprise. Something must have changed. Uh, he, although to be honest, the Goliath he was with was hurrying him. I'm sure he's a rather involved individual given his standing. So it could be any number of things or perhaps even related to this matter there's more afoot than merely siegfried's involvement if ever you might need him in the future i'm certain you could find him in the capital so zaid makes note of it and then kind of ruffles his feathers a bit well i suppose that matter will have to be dealt with later either something we'll have to bring up directly with the what was it Is the duke or the count and do you wish to meet the count of avondrad or the duke of gorisad uh, the Count of Avondrad. But that's another matter on top of other investigations we are to make in the forest and regarding the denizens and meetings happening there, as well as the strange weather events. Those may take our priority in any case. Mm, well, I will not keep you then. I approach him and I set the green vial down on the table. You seem like a very powerful man. You said well-respected. What is a thane, exactly? A thane is like uh, an honored warrior. This potion seller wants me to use this on the highest noble that I can find. I would ask for your help. Do you want me to drink it, or...? No, but if you could perhaps help me convince him that it was drank. He pours some out on the ground and hands the bottle back to you and smiles. Of course, uh, I shall indeed. I think I will need something else. What does it re you require? Mm. I do not know what marks one as noble in these parts, but if you would be willing to part with something as proof. He strokes his chin for a moment and then hands you one of his golden buttons. This talisman I was given by the Count himself. I would beg that you do not sell it. I won't. And one last thing. I do not know if this would interest you in any way, but he requested that I investigate some ruins beyond Avondrad. Mm -hmm. He did not say why. The woods around Avondrad are very and notoriously dangerous, although in recent years some people have reported that they have found ancient ruins. Um, That's so Sender kind of raises his brows at you and is like, is there something I missed? I turn to him and say, Margarash is someone who has bled for me, and if I was at liberty to tell her everything, I would just divulge everything right now. But for now, I would like to conduct what business we have quickly, but I don't want you to go ahead and worry about holding your tongue in front of her. Margarash, I'm taking you into my personal confidence on this. I just nod in silence and stare between the two. I need to know exactly what's happening around town. There is someone behind what's going on. 
This earthquake this morning was not normal. Neither these floods, nor the rock slides, nor anything else. Once I have more information, I believe it's time we had that talk. But not until then. I want a significant more amount of information. When that time comes, be prepared because I will be bringing my, I, if she consents, I would be bringing my friend here during that conversation. As you know, it's something that would inevitably have an impact on her as well. Of course, but we should get going. I feel that things are coming to a head soon. Of course, I've already let myself get distracted enough with crushing, sp having my friends crush spiders for me out in the wild. It's time to focus on the things that matter. Yes, I've heard about that. And let me tell you, the Count has been made aware of your actions. You told the Count about our actions? It's not up to me. Well, I have an ear in the Tetwini Rangers. The Tetwini Rangers were reporting to the Count about this when it happened. Do you have any recommendation on where it might be safe for us even to talk? My friends are out there, and I'm sure they're looking for a secure place, but for all we know, it might be a hive of enemies. This tower is perfectly sealed. Lives are at stake. And if we are to proceed with our plans, this matter must be resolved. We'll talk soon. We'll talk very soon. We'll resolve it quickly. Thank you as always, Cinder. Of course, my tea is boiling. Don't drink it like you did last time directly, and then you had to use a healing spell on your tongue. You know it could be worse this time. But it smells so good. You've never had a burned uvula, Cinder. They don't heal like burned tongue. And there it goes. All right. Does Zaid notice the person that happens to be wearing purple down the way? Yeah. The yeah. All right, so the well. Yes, there you oh. go. Zaid's going to tap the side of the well, kind of make a like low whistle like to get the attention of the rest of the party, and then nod towards down the road and mention, I think we've found uh, our slinker. I motion at Margaroth that maybe we should go the other way real quick. I nod and uh, follow suit. The rest of you wait here. We'll be right back. So Ludwig from the bar turns around, like eating some sort of pastry. <coughs> oh, I was just, um, hello. Drop the act. You've been following us for hours. I don't know what you're talking about. I was just... I said drop the act. His shoulders relax, and he completely drops his kind of stupid, drunken expression that he usually takes on. Very well. I suppose you would know as anyone else. And he kind of lowers his, uh, the hem of his cloth shirt collar, revealing a pendant of the Tedwini Rangers, which is like a tree trunk. Why did you not just say so? Well, that is not our way, as you perhaps know. I, I think you might be associated with us. I was told to follow you and anyone else who might look like bothersome sorts. Mm -hmm. You carry strange companions with you, my friend. He strange burps. times. Yeah, perhaps. Uh, following you is a hike, let me tell you. And he wipes his sweaty brow. You can tell, like, all of his silk robes are completely ruined by his sweat. How long? Uh, well, I noticed the duel, and I stayed a bit after. I counted a few of the footsteps, and it seems a few got away. I've been in contact with a, well... Can she be trusted? More than the others. There's something going on beyond what we've seen here. Oh, men in black robes wandering around the Ipindu, causing all sorts of things. The rangers have disappeared, and now we normally don't go into the Ipindu. We usually stay in the Tedwini Forest or the Northern Forest, but things are escalating. It's time we had answers, and normally I'm a what they call a stool pigeon. I drink ale and and listen at the bar for any information I can find, and I send the real rangers on their way. But we are in short supply of real rangers these days. What have you found out? The Count wants to know, needs to know. Have you seen any of the Dark Elves amongst the hooded figures? He looks shocked. What? I believe they may be in incorporated with one another. What is a Dark Elf? Do not s- oh, really? Elves are here? Oh, this is worse than orcs. Uh, no offense. Watch your tongue. Delpho, but go on. Are the elves here? And clearly, he's thinking that Mineris has invaded. I don't believe it's immediate threat, if that's what you're concerned about. But there's definitely elf magic afoot. 
and not uh, not your typical forest elf, if you catch my meaning. <sighs> not forest elf. I, I only know of the elves from the north. To go this far into Gorosad is unheard of. They would have to have an invasion force. What do you know? I don't think it's an invasion, but if that's what you want to report, feel free. The danger is just as real, it's just not as immediate. I was tracking some dark elves here. That's how I came upon the town again. Dark elves? Is that why you're in town? What are That's, dark yes. elves? They, in the underground, in caves, deep within the earth, they're a corruption. This, I don't know you. Again, he looks at the red half-orc. Do you know anything of this? Don't see many elves these days. This would explain all too many things. There is a reason why we haven't seen as much monsters in the forest. And there's a reason why the Caves of Chaos are such a burden near Castle Kamhal. You have to get to Kamhal. You have to. But, ah, things are bad here already. If you can help us here, I vow I will send good word to the Count. He'll give you any means necessary to send you to Kamhal. Riches, what have you. What are you in it for? The money? The fame? A title, perhaps? No. I simply seek to protect the forest. If it is a subterranean threat, this could explain many a thing. Dark elves by the gods. Runes feathers. Tell me, do you know of Geth Longwisk? I have heard of the name. Is he here? In town? No, but I could contact him. If you would, I'd be grateful. Tell him Wolfrun. Spe seeks his counsel. Where will you be? I will send him. I will be with my party. We are headed west into the woods. The uh, woods. If he could meet me there. Don't you know that green cloud fellow is in there? Exactly. You don't mean to kill him, do you? We'd start a riot in town. If it can be avoided. Hmm. I'll send Geth ahead of you. Good luck. And I would know the name of your red companion. I, I should tell the Count. He might have a certain affinity for her kind. Uh, no offense, milady. I do hear from certain rangers that your people are doing well in the northern forest. What do you know about my people and their whereabouts? Doing well for the orcs is different than doing well for the humans. Travelers have said that they raid caravans on their way to Belmede, though they're never found with green skins. I wonder if your kin are allied with the Greenskins, the Endless Horde. We do not have an alliance with others that are not our kin. These caravans, these other tribes, they're the same to us. I see. I think that is enough questions for now. Hmm. Yeah. Well, it is my job to ask these things, and if you could send me with any parting words that might help ease the spirits and the inclinations of the Count. He might receive you better. If he is having trouble with these green skins, as you have called them, perhaps we will be able to speak on how to handle them. Then I'll make myself disappear. I'll be at the Holland Raven if ever you need me be. I'll also be at the Rosewood household where my father has me doing chores. <laughs> I will be seeing you around. Don't get yourselves killed. I'll return to my rock where I'm having my second lunch. Right. I guess we'll uh, tell the others we might need to stay. Friends, it's been 72 hours. Zaid slowly turns, all of his joints cracking from standing so still. I wouldn't worry too much about being followed now. We took care of it. You took care of it? The man in purple robes is over there. They're not who are following us. Oh. You know, there is some things we should take care of in town, but I do believe we should go see this Jora before we take care of any of that. I am at your service. I think we might as well quit burning daylight. Make sure we have whatever provisions we need and head out. Agreed. You all die. I knew I should have cooked that <laughs> rabbit more. <laughs> you chose the wrong thing. The rabbit killed you. It had AIDS. Actually, I want to go see Eberlin. Does the party, is a, the party okay with that? Eberlin is the tailor. Tailor Eberlin. Should we go see ta Eberlin and then settle this Jorah business? What do, you, what do you need to see the tailor for? I just want to know if he's seen anything. He is quite mouthy and has a penchant for not minding his own business. 
You did threaten his life, though, if he ever opened his mouth again. That doesn't mean he's going to not make the mistake. You're, you're putting him in a position where I worry that I'm going to have to stop you from killing him. I'm not going to kill him. As long as he's afraid, it's good enough. Or maim. If there's no killing or maiming, then it's fine. I will not harm him physically. <laughs> Fair enough. I just figured it's someone that is nosy, keeps their eye out, whatever. I mean, it was yesterday whenever we got all of our information, so I guess a quick stop by here. Like, it couldn't hurt just to do a quick check. Just say what's up. See what yep. he's doing before we leave. Yep, we know he. We already know that he likes to go ahead and talk, especially when threatened. Um, your owl thorn has returned to its roost in the academy until called with a magical ability. All right, the door is opened and a brick is holding it open. Everlyn welcomes you with a smile. He's seeming a, a bit more confident, but it's obvious that it's uh, it's a mask. Uh, uh, welcome. Uh, how can I help you? Please come in. Can I do a perception check to see if there's anything valuable lying around? This I mean, is look the at this page. You want us to I mean, you ne listen, here's the thing. This motherfucker might have just left his last client's gold just kind of sitting somewhere, and he might not miss one or two gold pieces missing from the top. You guys are mean. The most yeah. valuable are his designs. There's a locked chest, and there is his um, pocket confession book, which is hanging off of his belt. We're just checking up on you, Everlyn. Here, why don't you take a seat? And I pull out the chair in front of me, out for him. He finds himself sitting down, looking at you expectantly. I place one hand firmly on his shoulder, and I lean down to whisper toward him. You remember what we spoke of before, right? Yes, of course. And you haven't spread any of that information anywhere? No, it's been rather quiet. I would like to make an insight check. Uh, it is unclear if he's telling you the truth or not. I start drumming my fingers a bit uh, forcefully on his shoulder. Eberlin. The second after you say his name, he just starts blurting out information. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> I saw a few blue bills wandering through here, and they wanted the same robes as the other guys. I didn't know. And uh, they said they were going towards uh, the waterfall. Uh, I don't know why. And um, there's a lot of people going through here and asking for strange garments. Green, mostly. It's a very expensive Everlyn. color. Evelyn. Yeah? Slower. Uh, well, uh, it's notable when people want a color that I have to order in, and... Uh, black is pretty expensive, and so is blue and green, but more and more people want them, and I keep hearing about people trying to go towards that, uh, I guess there's a meeting spot in the forest to talk to that green cloud fellow. And, uh, well, the bluebills were talking about finding someone in the, uh, they mentioned the waterfall, I don't know why, but they also ordered that weird black costume from earlier. I don't know why, but listen, I think... If anyone finds out that I told you, this is all I have. I'm trying to get married pretty soon here to Miri. You really can't oh. tell anyone. The fact that they, they're they okay with speaking openly around me. I mean, you can't buy that sort of confidence from people. And then his eyebrows kind of lift as if he might be insinuating he wants money. Eberlin, I haven't heard you yet, have I? You are? Are uh, you? No? Don't give me a reason to. In a moment of bravery, he puffs out his chest and goes, I could tell the guards. Tell them what? Uh, um, that I have airbirds to sell. So, these figures that came in for these, this garb. They were the blue pills. Merchants he already oh, told okay. you about. It's a family of merchants who sell things at the general gotcha. store. I have no more questions for you. I'm not sure about anyone else. Oh, I guess, have you seen any dwarves? Yeah, uh, there was a group of them. They asked me to fix some tears in their cloaks and shirts and stuff like that, and uh, I washed some of their clothes for them. That's basically it. Nothing else for me, then. As I walk past him, I pull out ten gold pieces and set it on the table and say, I don't know how your business is in terms of selling clothing, but if you continue to sell information to me like this, I'm going to be forced to pay premium prices for it. And then I just walk away, leaving the gold stacked on the table. So Green Cloud is probably meeting with his followers in the forest. 
All right, so you cross the river. A few townspeople kind of stare off at you as you wander west of Avendrad, over the bridge and into the woods. That man in blue staring at you curiously, and you might look over your shoulder and see a familiar fat man in purple robes kind of nodding at you as you disappear from the town into the forest you go. So it's only with the expertise of Wolfron and his memory of the descriptions of this secret glade that he was able to lead you to the correct location. This was the place. You're here, and it's dusk. It's the appropriate time. Wolfron seems more relaxed here than he has at any time since you have known him. Where Zaid is brushing out twigs and leaves from his cloak. The arches before you seem twisted and designed without being carved into. They're not erected, but grown in that way, guided into a specific form. This is in keeping with everything you know of the worshippers of Sylvanas. But there's something strange. The designs that have been so intricately worked into the wood, through the vines and are of fire, harsh winds, rocks and stones. Usually Sylvanas worshippers uh, decorate things with leaves and passive and peaceful images. As well, the uh, hanging of lanterns is kind of odd, especially since you were warned to bring some sort of sacrifice of furniture or something man-made. As something man-made in the presence of this shrine is uh, significant. Right. Do I remember anything in scanning that book that I bought? Uh, while there is some sort of connection to sacrifice, this seems unrelated. I'm examining the place with similar thoughts as I'm, I have a similar interest and bent towards the religious aspect of it and what, what, what's different about it from the other ones. This gate is not normal. It's completely different than what you would expect worshippers of Sylvanas to have. It's much more violent. And it seems like the things woven into here are tied to the specific disasters that are happening. So whatever's happening ahead is going to be something powerful and magical. And we need to be on our guard for something that's not necessarily maybe of the bandit variety. I send my owl aloft to sort of circle above. While the owl is circling above, what do you all think about this as a plan of action? Since this is an old god, I might be able to be seen as like someone legitimately wandering into this. Wolfrun, you're, you are wood crafty, so you could follow while hopefully being somewhat out of sight. And then Coulter and Zaid would bring up the rear. Zaid, who can either protect Coulter and reinforce him if we get ambushed, or just hopefully run ahead and support us if things go to shit really quickly. I'm good with whatever. If that's what you want to do, sure. I'm going to go ahead and start walking my way up here. As I get to the next gate, I just want to see if there's anything different here that stands out from the first one. So you notice that every gate is kind of themed. Uh, one has one sort of natural disaster, and another has a different one. So this one's more like avalanche, rock slide, sort of boulders, but all sorts of uh, maybe quicksand. That's the sort of decoration that's going on in this one storms and other natural disasters but this one's like themed i don't like that there are cliffs that are looming above me yeah no, yeah this. there's pagan disaster ritual blasphemy nonsense left and right i'm not surprised uh Coulter and wolfrun notice that there is a very large bear sleeping to the left of the party on a rock hold I grab is that Nola May and just put my hand to my mouth. The universal gesture of be quiet. Yeah, I freeze in place. Nola May doesn't move anything except his eyes, trying to find out what Wolfren's suddenly afraid of. He nudges his head towards the bear. It seems peacefully asleep. Wolfren just motions for him to walk, but quietly and slowly. You also notice that there's a three feet wide by six feet tall, like blank spot of grass in the, like where the, the grass meets the cliff and it stands out to you, but that's it. This is the meeting spot. Now that you're here, what do you do? We're supposed to like hoot like an owl or something at dawn or? At dusk. Yeah. Okay, so we need to wait for dusk if we're going to try to do anything. It is dusk right now. Oh, look at that. Conveniently. <laughs> With a bear to my left, I make a sound like a horned owl. Woo! Hoot, 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 hoot. My owl answers it. Woo! 
Oh wait, we have a fucking owl. That's, <laughs> That's I was really trying to interject, but I didn't. All right, so for a while, nothing happens. You can see the bear wake up and look at you and then kind of go back to sleep again. But um, oh. just when it seems like nothing is going to happen, uh, you hear a rustling come from deep within the forest. And soon, a man with green robes emerges. I'll be honest, I was halfway expecting the bear to be Jorah. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> Hello, I've hey, been expecting really. you. That's one of those things they do sometimes. Yeah, I was ready for the the bear to like drop its fur and like slowly morph into a human or something. All right, Come on, bear. So this kind of old man with a uh, blonde hair turning white, you know, kind of beard, wearing mostly green, steps out of the brush and leans on an old twisted staff and says, "Oh." It is customary to bring a sacrifice, but... Then he looks over all of you. Something tells me you are not here for usual business. Unfortunately not, Druid. Mm. Well, if I assume you might be here to... He, he's a, a very tactile man. He's touching his beard one moment and then letting his fingers, his callous fingers, glide over the etched stones of the standing stones erected by none other than the town stonemason, the stone carver, and then to a leaf, and then falling into a pit, and then dying forever. Okay, bye. You'll always remember the day <laughs> that you nearly caught your green cloud. <laughs> My leg. There seems to be like a self-satisfied inner peace about him, as if he looks at all of you and in part sees... A reflection of himself in some way, and a measure of how you're connected to him in nature. Your contact in Illithrond, the ex-druid, yeah. told you the druid over here has a red hair. So after he said all that about a, a sacrifice of furniture, uh, and him being kind of surprised that you're here, he asks you, I suppose you're here on behalf of Rune, is it? Am I under arrest? I'm not sure that is exactly what's happening at the moment. Tell me, what is your name? I'm Jorah Greencloud. Perhaps you've heard of me. Really? Who are you, Jorah Gle Greencloud? Mm, I'm a child of Sylvanus. His eyes look around towards the surrounding glade, as if appreciating their beauty. Some call me Druid, but that's a term used in a, well, a long time ago, when the Druids still met. Now I teach those who cannot be taught themselves about the true nature of things. Perhaps I could instruct all of you. I do not charge money. I have no use of such things. The land provides. Zayed is like, while not all of us perhaps knew your name and reputation before coming here, the land itself certainly announces it through the increasing disturbances originating from this very wood. I don't suppose you know any further information about it and the quizzical symbolism that seems to very coincidentally point towards this very location being a locus of destructive powers. It doesn't seem quite the amicable and peaceful nature of Sylvanus representing itself here. He smiles at you as if looking at a child figuring out something for the very first time, and he leans on his staff, condescendingly. Uh, it's a truth many have just started to figure out for themselves. I could instruct you, though I would ask, uh, why are you asking these questions in the first place? From what I can tell of your dress, you are a uh, sort of advocate for the bird god of Rune. I suppose you are quite perceptive after all. It seems nothing truly gets by those who once called themselves druids. But indeed, I do serve the Lord of Justice himself. And justice demands coming to terms with what is causing chaos and destruction. He laughs softly. I'm sure that many people have told you a thing or two about how men order themselves in these lands. He takes a walk around and admires more of the standing stones. You might find that in different lands, different men hold themselves in accordance to different laws. But nature, it always holds itself within a certain sphere. It has 
the will, almost, some might say, and the right to take and give life of its own volition. And that's the true peace that we recognize. Uh, some might mistake this for chaos, but uh, if I could be honest, I would call it the truth, a truth leading to many things. Uh, however, if I were to tell you more, I would ask for a sacrifice. You call it peace, and you say it has a will of its own, but yet this truth you claim, it means nothing if it can point to nothing. If it points everywhere, if its will fights in a thousand different directions, then what truly can it be said to strive for? How can it achieve anything close to justice or truth if it merely garbles the very concepts themselves? Now that is true chaos in and of itself. You can no more deny one exerting their will over you than that of one root covering another root. You argue for nothing, and in the end, you only breed suffering. Up until that point, it looks like he was about to, like, confirm something, and then he stopped. I'm afraid, my friend, I'll need some sort of sacrifice of man-made object to and know that we are of the same mind. I would be willing to teach you more. A man-made object, you say? A wise one? I dig around. Uh, calling him wise one seems to make him smile, and he nods. Uh, preferably something made of wood. The Zaid will kind of murmur under his breath. You offer him sacrifice, and you grant power unto him. You acknowledge his authority over you. I just dig out my blank journal while I write notes, and I, I just start hastily penning down Zaid's recent speech. I was so inspired by his words, I was starting to write them down. You notice that he's subtly trying to sound more like Zaid. Tell me, Jorah, when was the last time you saw Raph and Dane? There is a very long pause. He told me of you. You know that, right? You must know his name. Um, is that not, um, Dane's cousin in town? Yes, uh, he came here a week ago. Um, he was one of my most fervent students. So what did you teach him, then, if he was one of your students? I would be willing to divulge such information if you were to honor the ritual as a sign. I draw my crossbow. Of Oh, wait, faith? don't give him that. No. This isn't Jorah, you idiot. I his lay face him straight drops. His face. Who are you with? Mind your business. Who are you with? He totally drops the, the bullshit accent and is like <laughs> pointing his staff at you like a, some sort of weapon. You don't know what you're dealing with here. I can offer you a place, but you have to play by the rules. A place in what? A temple. Why are you here? A who are you? Who? A temple to elemental evil. Is that not why you're here? I am like, my eyes are like bulging out of my skull. <laughs> it's inevitable. The secret is control. It's not chaos, it's just evil. And if you give yourself into that evil, then you can gain some access of power before it's too late. Who are you with, really? I won't die in vain if you mean to kill me. Did the Count send you? I serve nature. I serve Sylvanas. So too do I. Trust you me. You corrupt his name. Listen to me when I tell you this. It's what Sylvanas wants. One day soon, the entire world will be a maelstrom of fire and wind. And you'll thank me for it, and you are spared. I draw back my bolt. Don't kill uh, me. Anything else? I was going to say, can I, uh, since he's clearly going to kill him, can I put a hand on Wolfrun's shoulder and try and intimidate. I want to get as much information out of this guy as I can. So I look him in the eye and say, you're saying that elemental evil and chaos, not chaos, but certainly conditions that are not amicable to life are guaranteed in the future. Now, I'm asking you directly for knowledge. Why do you think that? But instead of us offering you a sacrifice, you're going to be paid in your life as wages, and you're going to be giving us what we want in advance. Half Elf, it is a mistake to let this man live. He's clearly trying to compose himself, and before he answers you, he says, I die. The town rises in flames. It all starts with my death. Um, and I roll it, the town save. will end in wind and torrents and chaos, just as you claim. What happens in the future is not decided, uh, despite what you claim. 
Here's the thing, though, that is present before you. You have two believers of God's that most certainly are not supportive of your actions. And a person who is an outsider to this place who doesn't really have any connections to this town. And the fourth person who's part of the strongest organization outside of the Count who can survive anything. There's nothing that we have to fear of what comes in the future after killing you. So if you want to negotiate with the town as hostages, you should be negotiating with the townspeople. If you want to negotiate with us, you should use something of value, like the information we're telling you to either give to us or die with. I want to hear why specifically you believe elemental evil is going to continue rising. Nature is evil. Who is your teacher? He chuckles softly. Please, there is no chaos in the world. There is only good and evil. These are things known to the ancient orders of this world. Only we discovered recently, but these truths are paramount. I seriously implore you to put down whatever idols and symbols of your paltry gods that you worship now and embrace the truth of the universe before it engulfs you. I can protect you. How many of you are there? As I said, if I die, then the town will go up in flames. How many of you are there? You're someone who peddles false, ho false hopes and foolish ideas. You're not the font of these ideas. I want to know where the source is so I can stop it up there. This is a clear threat, a clear intimidation. If we're gonna go ahead and, as a famous general once said from the North whenever he was unifying a large number of small states, if you're going to face a rebellion at some point, it's better to incite it immediately so you can go ahead and put it down when it's weak and while you still have loyal troops. So, the only reason not to shoot him is because we believe that if I keep him alive, he might continue to report useful information to me. This is his only chance to flip. I'm pretty sure he is the leader. Um, if he doesn't give us anything else, then we're right where we were. If we're trying to chase this up the, uh, up the ladder, I'm pretty sure this is the top of the ladder for as far as this situation goes. I mean, the organization, yes, but I'm like, I want to know, like, um, like, where would he have gotten these ideas, right? Like, he might lead this organization, but did, like, did he, de he doesn't seem to have had the idea that he's using divine inspiration, but he's clearly tapping into ancient powers. So where, where did this come from? Yeah, who seeded it to him? Did he find, is there someone in town that's moving from town to town, like, kind of starting chapters? Or is there some kind of unearthing of artifacts or whatnot that are contributing to these something, something, something? Else? Right, like did he touch some weird stone down in a fucking cave somewhere and all of a sudden he started hearing voices? Like even that, because then we know to go to the cave and look for the talking rocks. I want to know where Jorah is. So when you ask this man's eyes, his hands upraised, it looks fairly flicks in the direction of the cleared out grass. And then back to you. I have no idea. I see. You want to know how many there are of us? Everyone who openly worships Sylvanas and Avondrad has come here. I promise you that. You want to kill all those innocent civilians? I don't think you do. And you lied to them. You killed Jorah. No. And you served his place and you lied to them. We don't need to kill them. We just have to show them how far they've fallen. You have no <laughs> idea, do you? Most of the town, most of my students anyway, are members of the temple. It's only a matter of time. I promise you, if you do submit, I will spare you. But this is your last chance. This is your last chance. Let's be absolutely clear. And I look at Zaid. If Rune is a god of justice, then we don't really have to worry too much about the innocent civilians in town. There is a large religious presence there, and I want to remind you, none of us really have any ties there. Well, not no ties. I suppose I know a number of people, but... I never take lightly words of portent from a wise one, regardless of who speaks. I do not wish to see the town burn, but... If I tell you anything, I want immunity. Kill me now, and you will, will kill Avondrad. So you won't all kill me. There's no need for us to kill you. 
we're going to bring you back into town with us, because otherwise there's no way for us to confirm. You will, listen, you can either die here or live a little bit longer. I think we can make this work. If we make a spectacle of him that he willingly walks into and he can remain unharmed. To the druid. And I say, it's time to choose. I'm trying or to tell you. It's the temple of elemental evil. And where is it? As far as I understand, the temple was born of pilgrims wandering into the forest and studying ancient writings scrawled upon strange temples that spoke of the rise and of a climactic fall of a great people who came eons before. I tell you this now because I know my life is forfeit. There is no more control. I'm doomed. They call the leader of our order, the Beholder. He's a man of great power. I have met him but once. I have not seen his face, but only his chin. He was clad so in black it? robes. It is a man? Indeed. He What's seemed... the color of his skin? Pale of skin, black of hair. I believe every word of what I tell you. There are no lies. This is the truth. Human conflict. Even conflict between Sacria and monsters and animals is but a preamble to the eventual fate of the world. That's chaos, war. That's disorder. The true order is fire and wind. But those who follow it, trust me, will be protected. Those who facilitate it will be its dominators. This is what we believe. This is the ancient way of Gorosad. We will bring the old kingdom back once again. Please, y you must believe me. W we can b rebuild. Arunia does not have to rule us any longer. Mere protection in a maelstrom of wind and fire, where you believe that you will have the capacity to control and dominate the endless, ceasing, scorching winds that would burn down everything in sight from horizon to horizon, leaving nothing but ash and blackness. What is there to dominate but the ash that ever moves under this scorching wind? What would be the purpose other than to facilitate the anguish and pain feeding the very wind itself, leading your life to be a miserable stasis of nothingness in this maelstrom led only for the appeasement of some other being. Why do you believe that your insight now was any stronger than when you were a highwayman, when you were informed that you could be led to greater purpose by someone making you a pawn in their own world-destroying campaign of which you would be the primary harmed party among a mountain of corpses left only to watch in soulless pain as That's... at least the rest of their souls return to their inevitable resting places. Zaid, you speak as a true believer, but there are things that he just revealed there that show that this isn't just about faith to him. This is a mechanism that he can take revenge on Runia. This is partially a political machination. He just said that we can rebuild and Runia doesn't have to rule us any longer. This isn't just about him wanting to serve some elemental God. chaos god. This, this is something to do with a local, a local uprising against Runia. So then this question is, who else are you talking to and where else are these ideas being spread? I've told you all I know. And will you recant? It would seem I have no choice. Is this satisfactory to you, Zaid? It is to me. Wolf run. His head hung, his eyes low. The druid, Jorah, finally says, And I am your prisoner. 